Oh, hi everyone. Um, I just had to show you this amazing uh, combination of old Technic, Lego and new Technic. Uh, so I had this kit when I was a kid. It is the Lego Technic test car 8865. Um, here we go. This is the original uh, car model and the B model for this was this amazing Jeep, uh, which I really, really love. This little off-roader. Um, and my son got this for Christmas, the uh, Technic, I don't know what you call it, track racer thing, um, 42095. And it is fully remote control or radio control. So it has the uh, battery pack and a radio receiver and two large motors and a controller. And I thought, wouldn't it be great to try and fit them uh, to the old style Jeep to get it going. Um, funnily enough, this did have an option back in the day to fit a Technic Lego motor to, and obviously these are the old kind, and it had to be heavily geared to actually um, get it moving, uh, which meant it was very, very slow, and also wired as well. They were, they were joined by wires, um, hugely large battery pack so you could get your vehicle to kind of crawl along the floor which I did as a kid and thought it was amazing but I thought oh man wouldn't it fulfill a dream to get this fully actually remote controllable. What I also did was I bought a servo, a Lego servo because I thought well if I fit both the motors to the rear drive and then get a servo and fit it to the steering I can have a fully remote control car. I mean this one this one steers by having a motor on each side and where you've got Caterpillar track, if you stop one motor and keep the other one going or reverse one and put one forward, it will spin the car. But with this one, I wanted to get proper authentic steering going. So let me show you what I've done. First of all, I fit the servo. I'll take this uh, bonnet off so you can see how I've done that. Well, you can't really see, but inside here, um, you can see the shaft from the uh, uh, steering wheel goes down into a rack and pinion system, which is deep inside there. Um, and I thought, well, wouldn't it be great to fit the servo to the uh, actual rack and pinion system so that when the steering um, works, it actually steers the steering wheel, changes the steering wheel as well. So I've left that connected. Um, and if I just turn my battery pack on here, um, I fitted a nice little um, steering wheel <laughs> to my... Um, controller here just to put a wheel on there and a little arm that fits onto this so it feels like you're sort of rotating a steering wheel when you're uh, playing it but this is how this works so if I turn uh, right and left so the servo is pretty powerful and it kind of um, doesn't uh, take any time to kind of steer the the engine the rack and pinion works and you can see the steering wheel moving as well so oh, I was pretty chuffed with that pretty nice um, so I'm going to fit the bonnet back on there whilst I talk to you about the engines at the back. Now, I wanted to put two motors on there for power um, and strength. And again, I didn't really want to mess around with the original design too much, um, seeing as though it's quite, uh, quite a good design for a Jeep. Um, I quite like the shape of it. Now, one thing, this obviously has front suspension as well as you can see, which works with the steering because it's got these little uh, uh, ball joints on there. So as the suspension works, the steering will still uh, steer properly. Now the rear suspension is not independent. The whole um, back, the two back wheels and the back axle is fixed and um, the suspension kind of moves like this on, on a couple of springs under there. And I knew that if I mounted the battery pack somehow on the back of the Jeep, it would be too heavy and the Jeep would just be riding at this low height. I've, I've done that before. Um, so I thought, well, I need to mount the battery pack, the heaviest bit, and the two motors somehow on the actual back axle so that none of the weight is carried by the springs. The springs still just carry the weight of the actual chassis there. So you've got the whole um, vehicle being able to move. Now it does mean this kind of rocks backwards and forwards a little bit. Um, and kind of bashes the seat, so it wouldn't be very comfortable if you're actually driving it. But anyway, let's take a look at the back and see how I fix this on. So there we have the battery pack. This is the radio receiver here with the, I don't know what it uses, infrared or something from the uh, end of the transmitter. Um, so what I've got, I've got the both of the motors connected here to the same output 
and then the servo is output number two over here. So one I've got this this blue output, this connects the servo, and this um, does both of the motors at the same time. So all this does is it, it transmits um, power to both of those at the same time from the battery pack. Okay, so underneath here, this is what we can see. Um, I've got both the motors in tandem, one here, one here, vertically coming down um, like this. And as you can see, I've geared it so that the, there we go, that's a bit easier to see. I've geared it so that they both work together. Uh, a cog in between means that they are both, even though they're turning the same way, this cog will turn um, in the opposite direction to these two. Um, and what I've done is I've hooked it up to the actual uh, differential. Now a differential, in case you don't know what a differential does, um, when this vehicle turns a corner, obviously the inside um, wheel will be rotating slower than the outside wheel. If they were fixed and they were rotating at the same speed, you'd get a little bit of tire rub and it, it wouldn't kind of be as efficient. Um, and it might even, you know, on a real car, wear your tires out, but on this remote control car, it just, it just kind of would probably not be as fast or as grippy or something like that. Um, anyway, they put this differential in here in just like a real car. Um, which means that one um, wheel can turn independently of the other. Which means when you're going around a corner, the power is still being delivered. Oops. The power is still being delivered, but um, the wheels can turn at different rates. Um, so let's just check out the uh, back motors if I push this up. So there you go. You see it's pretty powerful. Both of those um, engines spinning at the uh, at the same time and turning that and then activating the differential as well which means if I stop this wheel um, the other wheel will still turn twice as fast <laughs> um, that means if it's going around a corner it will still deliver power to both wheels okay let's give it a go then shall we let's actually get this thing uh, on the road make sure it's all intact after I knocked it over there Oh, I love the shape of this thing though. It's just so kind of compact and and bulky. Right, I'm going to set it down here. Here we go. And uh, I'm quite impressed. I'm going to try and operate it with one hand, but I'm quite impressed at the speed this thing, um, considering to how it was when I was a kid, uh, and it did not <laughs> go very fast at all. So, steering check. There we go. Off we go. Not bad at all. Oh, crash. <laughs> Loads of fun to just drive around. Oh, crash. Not that I'm driving it particularly well. Um, so I probably do need some fresh batteries in here. Might have a little bit of extra speed um, given if I put some extra batteries in. The turning circle isn't brilliant um, whilst turning right. I think I might have knocked it when I knocked it over. <laughs> but great fun. And as a kid, I would have absolutely died to have this. Absolutely brilliant. I love it. And as you can see, the suspension working. As you kind of rev off the line, you get that kind of bit of a torque thrust going on there. Um, so suspension in full effect. Yeah, love it. Hope you like it too. Um, have you got any combinations or anything that you've done that you'd like to show? Um, yeah, send me a link. Cheers.